Welcome to hour number three, live right here on this special Sunday version of college football. Today, it's the opening weekend of the 2024 CFB season. It continues with a college football game for a fourth consecutive night on this Sunday in Las Vegas. Top 25 tilt, our third and final rank versus rank matchup between number 13 LSU and number 23 USC. Plenty of previews and picks coming your way in this third and final hour. But it's a full weekend, week number one, over this holiday weekend. Joe Lisi, Kevin Walsh, and Ben Stevens here to recap it all. And that included 21 FBS college football games on a Thursday with all eyes on Boulder, Colorado. The debut of year number two of the prime era for CU. Deion Sanders in the buffs taking on an FCS powerhouse in North Dakota State. Lisey Guy, a game that many had circled all summer long because of the narratives that were swirling around. How would Colorado rise to expectation in 2024? For what reason would you ever schedule North Dakota State to start off a year? Dion even saying that during Big 12 Media Days way back in July. Colorado gets a win to open up its season, 31-26. to NDSU does cover as a 10 and a half point underdog what was your main takeaway and the reaction from thursday night in boulder well they found a way to pull it out something that they did in the early part of the season but the glaring weaknesses of this team seem to still be the offense and defensive lines as it relates to the rushing attack and as it relates in regards to run support and that linebacker play i think needs to get much better from last week to this week when they face off against dylan rayola and the nebraska cornhuskers they're already seven point dogs in this matchup we talked about Shador Sanders stepping up 400-yard performance, Travis Hunter. But when they had to run the football, Kevin, in the fourth quarter to sustain and close that game out, they failed to do that. And that's the strength right now in Nebraska. We know that Matt Rule has built this team in the interior. He now has the quarterback and trigger man to lead it. It's a different team than when Jeff Sims went into Boulder and got boat raced last year. So they're going to need a much better effort. And again, they could score at will. But that defense, to me, needs to kick it up a notch. Totally fair. It did in the game, though. They were pitching a second-half shutout until the two-minute or four-minute drive, four-minute drill, if you will, for North Dakota State. Yep. They found the end zone. Cam Miller had a great game on the ground. It ended up getting you know well through his passing total uh, as well, which was a miss by me in the game. But and for Colorado, I, I don't want to – change narratives and i'm not saying that you guys are but i think maybe some out there are either changing narratives or not aware north dakota state is not Furman. this is not sure. southern utah this is not murray state it's a real football team here that if they moved up a level would be expected to within a few years contend for bowls okay. so for colorado they get a win they almost covered they ended up not being able to do so and their stars were stars And I think that's the selling point of the Buffaloes is their very best. And I don't mean starting 22, but I mean their top three to four guys they believe can match up with anybody in the country. I I don't think you can stress enough how interesting it is that arguably the best player Mm -hmm. at the most important position in the sport is on Colorado. 13.1 yards per attempt, four touchdowns, and an insane not-his-fault pick. Shador Sanders a game-changer, Joe. He is. I just want to say, like, in college basketball, and I'll bring this up, one player can take over and make that or carry that team. For sure, yeah. In football, it it is a team effort, and I think that's the weakness when we just look. Colorado is not just in terms of that matchup against North Dakota State, but actually challenging potentially for a Big 12 championship and more importantly, a college football playoff appearance. The interior needs to get better. So they're they they have Ferraris on the outside and what you do. But now they need to protect them. And, and when push comes to shove, that interior still, in my opinion, week one is weak. If it progresses, maybe I'll change my tune. Listen, I think the reactions are going to be swift, regardless of how you feel about Colorado. And that can kind of inform your take on this Buffs team. For me, I think if you're realistic about the ceiling of success for CU, 
It's getting to a bowl game for just the second time since 2008, at least at six wins. They did make it in 2020 in the COVID-shortened season, but their first true bowl appearance since 2016. And the win total remains the same, five and a half. The over has the juice. It was the number four Dion and the Buffs entering the year. It remains that price after the season opening victory over North Dakota State. But if you're trying to be overly optimistic about the Buffs, I'm not sure you saw anything on Thursday you did not already know. You have two potential top five picks in the 2025 NFL Draft, and the star power shined for Colorado on Thursday. Shador Sanders, 445 yards. Travis Hunter, three receiving touchdowns, played 129 snaps and had 132 receiving yards. He might be the best wide receiver in college football if that's all he did, but of course he plays on the defensive side as well. It's why his Heisman Trophy price was slashed in half and then some, 60 to 1 before the year got started, now currently at a 25 to one number but Kev I think there's so much notoriety around Colorado because of Deion Sanders and all of the national attention he has brought to see you some good some bad I would say overly positive conversation around what was a dormant football program in Boulder for a couple of years you seem to be a little bit more optimistic about Colorado perhaps than Lisi and I you bet their preseason win total last year yeah. over three and a half which they did they won four of their first six games what do you think is a realistic ceiling of success for CU this season <laughs> um well I, I okay fine I think it's realistic they win the big 12. I don't think it's likely. Again, sh- challenge me on this. So, so let me – okay, go ahead, and I'll, fo- I'll follow up. Shador Sanders yeah. could very easily be the best quarterback in the Big 12. Completely Possibly, great. but but I think the Big 12 is loaded with a, about 10 yeah. to 12 I'm quarterbacks that could challenge. But he's there, and right. I wouldn't just say the Big 12. I'd say all of college football. Right. When that's the case, you have the potential. Look, I'm going to make another dangerous comparison. LSU's defense was atrocious last year, okay? But Jaden Daniels and that offense put up so many points. They didn't get routed in those games, mm-hmm. rarely, right? I mean, the Ole Miss game, it was, it was till the very, very last right. whistle, right? The, I know the FSU game looked ugly, but that was a, a, a weird one all in all the way, the way it played out. I, I'm, listen, you're talking about the ceiling. See, that's kind of my – this is where, where I'm different on people. Ceiling, if you have the best quarterback in college football, a lockdown corner – and one of the 15 best wide receiver rooms in the sport, your ceiling is significantly high. The problem is they live in a very big house. Yeah. Big ceiling, low base. Right. That's the problem with Colorado. It is, but again, it still comes down to the protection, right? Uh, Shador Sanders is not as mobile right. as like Jaden Daniels, right? So Certainly even if the product protection where uh, broke down, Jaden Daniels could take the game over with his legs. Right. I don't necessarily think we can see that out of Shador. Is he mobile? Absolutely. But I don't think we're seeing 150 yards on the ground if that offensive line allows 56 sacks like they did last year. Let me also look for 445, right? Like, again, listen, I'm not even trying to – I think he's better to throw the football in Jane Let me ask you this. Yeah. Because I think you're high on the the, the team. If they beat Nebraska next week, who they beat last year, Mm 36-14, that's stunning? Stunning. I see. I, I don't know how that's stunning. Stunning I don't know how that's for me, stunning. based on Nebraska, because wow, it would be another tough year. I think than in Lincoln and Colorado would be better than I expect. I think that Colorado's biggest advantage over a program like North Dakota State, albeit an FCS power, but they're dominant in the trenches, and that wins and has consistently in FCS college football, where Colorado took advantage and rightfully so was through the aerial attack. Nebraska's a lot better defensively and has the athletes to compete with Colorado on the outside. And I think Nebraska's ground game is going to expose Colorado more than North Dakota State was capable of. I'm not knocking you for the pick. Right. We'll do it when we get there. My point is, year over year, last year they lost right. by three touchdowns. Yep. Colorado's interesting, man. A very interesting team, to say the least. More from Thursday and Friday. Then.
Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsCrit. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of, of depth there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton. They will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton's actually the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest. Handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. The beauty of week number one of college football on Labor Day weekend when the entire nation gets involved is five straight days of CFB. And that started Thursday. A few more points on Colorado. They were the story of September, and they will still be a big story from August now on the first day of September. I did want to make this point about the Buffs because, again, I thought that you didn't really learn all that much about this CU team in year-over-year improvement because the weaknesses were the weaknesses, the strengths were still the strengths, at least in a one-game sample size against the Bison of NDSU. Only one sack allowed by a Colorado offensive line that needs to be so much better this year. They gave up 56 sacks, second most in FBS college football a season ago. Shador Sanders suffered 51 of those sacks. He was the most sacked quarterback in all of FBS college football, only allowing one. But in college football, unlike the National Football League, stats are a little bit harder to come by in certain categories, and QB hits is not out there. But Shador was smoked a ton to his credit stayed in the pocket and delivered the football strike after strike but that is still an area of concern for me about Colorado big picture if they're even going to get to six wins in bowl eligibility but again star power on display not just Shador Sanders and 445 yards and four passing touchdowns but Travis Hunter who, if you're not a quarterback, did all of the things necessary already to be in Heisman Trophy conversations. Kev, we have often said, though, individual success correlates to team success. It's how you stay in the Heisman Trophy race. Will that be the case for Travis Hunter this season? So, uh, I guess oddly, after the conversation we were just having, I don't think Colorado will be good enough, despite his... His case isn't tied to team success, yet I don't think they're going to give a Heisman Trophy to a player who is on a team that is well below the level. Because I think this is a tough schedule. I would expect this team to win probably between five and seven games. Again, my ceiling point is as if we're all wrong and don't realize just how incredibly valuable it is to have guys like this, Joe. But... Last year, I remember you were interested in Hunter and the Heisman. Mm-hmm. Now down to 25 to 1. Are you still interested? Absolutely. And, and you said, you know, ceiling, right? Yeah. Five to six. Right. They get to 5 to 7. 
And he does exactly what we discussed last week in regards to 10 interceptions, 1,000 yards, multiple double-digit touchdown receiving, you know, performances. He's going to be there. And again, you don't need a, a ten and two and an eleven and one record to have that type of resume. You you equated it to Otani with the forty forty club in terms of pitching and, and batting. Same thing when you have a defensive player that we haven't seen dating back to what Charles Woodson for that matter in yeah. regards to being able to take a game over, playing one hundred and twenty five plays per game. Problem was last year he got hurt. You know what they're going to have to do is limit him. I believe. In regards, as the season progresses, if they're going to make a bowl run, okay, maybe not 125 per game, but let's get him in the area of about 95 to 100. Let's limit his body. He's not that big of a kid anyway. And for conference play, you want to preserve him. So I think it's there. You, if he does what he does, what he has done, mm-hmm. and he maintains that, and they're seven and five. Def, he'll definitely be a top three player, and he'll be invited to New York. It is interesting to see CU's team price to win a Big 12 championship at 25-1, to 1, which is the same exact number that Travis Hunter has to win the Heisman Trophy. I think one is more realistic than the other. All right, let's go to some other games that we saw on Thursday into Friday. Four ranked opponents playing on Thursday, one on Friday evening. Missouri rolling over Murray State 51 zip. Brady Cook and Luther Burden connect for a touchdown. They made it look easy. Utah rolls over Southern Utah 49 zip. Cam Rising back for year number seven in college football. Played five offensive possessions to start the game for the Utes. Threw a touchdown on all five offensive possessions. Of course, it's Southern Utah, Lisi guy. But when you have Cam Rising back for the Utes, it's one of the reasons a lot of people feel confidence that Utah makes a run to a Big 12 title in their first year in the league. That was a problem in regards to winning matchups last year. They were inefficient in regards to the passing attack. They lost to Oregon State. They were challenged by Baylor on the road because they couldn't stretch defenses over the top. And that was because they had freshman quarterback players play and inexperienced now cam rising comes back we know about his durability and his ability to break contain just the way riley leonard and notre dame did last night that's what cam rising brings now i want to see them in the big 12 i said baylor's on deck that's a very interesting game because yep. baylor and dave aranda match up well but kev the game is in rice eccles where we know they dominate but it's still intriguing that cam rising potentially could be also a heisman trophy front runner uh, at the end of the year yep. you know the, some of the look ahead lines are already coming out for next week utah's a 17 point favorite yeah mm-hmm. so i mean one i kind of am expecting maybe baylor will be on the card this that but it's not supposed to be all that interesting of a game there's now, maybe that's more tied to Baylor than Utah. But I do think it will be really interesting to see the first Big 12 team make a trip to Utah. Now, this, I don't know if it counts as a conference game. The Big 12 is a little messy this year with some of that yeah. stuff. There's a bunch of conference games. Because K-State, home. Arizona, two weeks later, I think, it was a, a home and home conference game, and they played right. last year. Right. So I wonder. We'll, we'll right. clarify. Yeah. By it now. was a home and home, so I think it's Waco. That it might have been on the schedule due to last been, year. I so. believe so, which is – but nevertheless, it's a Big 12 opponent going to Utah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the big things, man. It's, a, it's, a, it's such an important thing for so many college football teams. Clemson, right, like – we, you know, you've always mentioned how tough it is to go to that building and grab a win. Sure. It's it's true of Utah, right? And if you look at this schedule here, if every one of these teams that they're able to invite into their building are just at a monstrous disadvantage, well, they get to host Arizona, they get to host Iowa State. Those are two of the three, four toughest teams they're going to have to play. They yeah. do have that trip at Oklahoma State on the schedule, which yeah. is, I think, is certainly big for the for the Pokes. But Kyle Whittingham who has, I think, continuously grown in favor in, in terms of his perception. Entering a conference like this, which is so kind of wide open, it's a big reason why they're the favorites. I think it's Whittingham, and it's what Utah's done, it, taking care of business at home. Two decades at the helm for Kyle Whittingham in Salt Lake. Utah had their 18-game home winning streak snapped last year as they got routed by Oregon, but very good in Rice Eccles. More from early this week and what it means for the season beyond next.
Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of, of depth there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton. They will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton's actually the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest. Handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Some ranked teams in action on both Thursday and Friday night to fully kick off week number one of this college football season. And what is in store week number two? Oklahoma dismantling Temple in Norman. Jackson Arnold making his first start for the Sooners in his home stadium. Temple's really bad. Sorry to our executive producer and proud Temple alum, Chris Kofsky. But, oh, boy, it's going to be tough for the Owls. OU covering as a 42-and-a-half point home favorite. Kansas ranked in the preseason poll for the first time since 09, easily dispatching Lindenwood, 48-3. to NC State struggled against Western Carolina. They were trailing early in the fourth quarter before the Wolfpack stormed back to win by 17, but came nowhere close to covering as a 32-and-a-half point favorite. So, Lisi, we start with you. As we were talking throughout the week on Football Full Circle, you said, I love Western Carolina tonight covering 32-and-a-half. How come and what did you see? Well, we talked about it on the air. The fact that Grayson McCall was a little bit inconsistent last year at Coastal Carolina. Carolina, He dealt with injuries, missed the back end of the season. I thought that that could be a cause of concern going into a new offense with Dave Doran. They were a methodical offense last year. They had two quarterbacks, Kevin M.J. Morris, uh, and last year with Brennan Armstrong that transferred in from Virginia as well. Armstrong took a while to get used to the system, and I think that was a cause of concern laying a 32 and a half point number so it opened at 32 and a half before kick it got down to 31 and a half they brought in jordan waters from duke they wanted to run the football consistently mm. i just didn't see it you know north carolina state's a very good team i don't think they're an elite team and i think the offensive defensive lines struggled against a more physical fcs front i mean if you watch that game even though nc state won uh, they won it in the last eight minutes of the matchup i mean western carolina had a 21 to 17 lead had into the fourth quarter they play like that against tennessee kev they're gonna get boat raced oh it was it was terrible but they are a bad look ahead team so in some capacity for tennessee it's gonna sound silly but it's not like ah oh, see perfect boom like we're yeah. it was a little more concerning it's like oh they're that focused on us that western carolina gave them a game if these teams play a hundred times 99, NC State wins. I don't know how many are within this range, but good for the Catamounts to cover. Cole Gonzalez is going to be a real threat at the FCS level. I'll give him that. I thought the the Friday performance from Oklahoma was interesting. Yeah. We know Temple's bad. We know Oklahoma's a big favorite. 
I don't know what I was looking for from Jackson Arnold. I don't think it was 141 yards. I know you don't need more than that, but it's just we've talked, you know, strength of schedule is a big talking point this time of year. And OU is one of the main ones with the schedule that they landed on in the SEC versus what Texas landed on in the SEC. Obviously, the two teams don't have the same expectations. But for Oklahoma, I I just, I don't know. I know they won 51 to 3. It didn't. It didn't inspire a world of confidence that maybe I'm not giving them enough credit. The Sooners at home this week against Houston. Now a non-conference matchup against the Cougs, who lost big yesterday to start their season and the debut of Willie Fritz, the former Tulane head coach to UNLV. They got roasted by the Rebs of Las Vegas. Oklahoma four-touchdown favorite, laying 27 and a half. A bunch of the ranked teams that we saw on Thursday and Friday, compelling week two games that weren't so much in week number one. We mentioned Oklahoma. It's our second of two top 25 tilts next week. It's Tennessee and NC State. Game in Charlotte at Bank of America Stadium where the Panthers play. So technically neutral site, but not all that far away from Raleigh where NC State is. The Vols, Kev, open up as an early, about touchdown favorite, laying six and a half. You were optimistic about Tennessee's offensive output, put it on display against Chattanooga. Nico Ayamileava gets another start here against the pack. What do you expect? I think it's a it's a really, really important game because I have Tennessee getting one of those at-large yeah. spots. I think it is going to be interesting next week because we all have our overreactions of trying to fade all these underwhelming ACC teams. That's I know we've kind of made the point, but just forget Miami for a second. Mm-hmm. NC State was embarrassing. Clemson was embarrassing. Florida State was embarrassing. And you should at some point mention how good the Vanderbilt pick was, but also how embarrassing that was for Vatek. Yeah, Vatek, right? 80% of the pr- productivity coming back. That defense is secondary. Only gave up a buck sixty-eight in the back end. They got abused by Pavita. And and Vanderbilt. So we'll see. Again, not going to be easy in Charlotte because that's a difficult place to play. Vandy, a big win at home against Virginia Tech. Many thought that year number three under Brent Pry could be one of spoilers in the ACC. Diego Pavia in the doors making a difference. Now we preview Sunday night in Las Vegas next. gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of, of steps there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton, they will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton's actually the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. A 
Sunday night in Sin City. A marquee matchup throughout this Labor Day weekend in week number one of the 2024 college football season. It is our third and final rank versus rank game that we have on this opening weekend slate. It's number 23 USC taking on number 13 LSU. Tonight at Allegiant Stadium, the home of the Raiders in Las Vegas. A little bit of movement on these numbers now down to just a three and a half point spread in favor of the tigers the total is up by a full point as well to 65 and a hook earlier lisi throughout this show we talked big picture for both of these programs it's year three for each head coach brian kelly in baton rouge lincoln riley in la now let's talk game breakdown as you match up these two sides who do you give the edge uh still lsu and the fact that we're seeing three and a half and 65 and a half in regards to this total doesn't sway me one bit. I don't care if it's short money, public money. I still think this game is one in the trenches. I give the edge to Will Campbell and LSU's offensive line. I love the rushing attack of Josh Williams and Caleb Jackson. We'll see how that plays out. Keep an eye out, Kev, for the tight ends in regards to this matchup. Mason Taylor, he has a very low number, 39 and a half. I altered him to 50, 60 plus. That could take the pressure off of Nussmeyer. And again, I'll go back to this factor. Love Brian Kelly. He's family. And unfortunately, I think he has the coaching advantage in this matchup. I think uh, I think Lincoln Riley's just uh, smoking mirrors at this point. Mm. Yeah, that's bizarre. Mm. <laughs> Correct, even. Um, with that said, I would lean towards LSU as well because I actually think they start further ahead than USC, and I think that's a little under-discussed when you kind of – maybe it's not. Maybe that's why the number is what it is. Yeah. We talk so much about how bad these defenses were, except – they weren't the same level of bad. It's, again, why that kid never deserved that thing. <laughs> LSU last year allowed a full 30 yards less per game compared to what the USC defense allowed, and more importantly, a full seven less points per game. Mm -hmm. Just to give you that gap, if you then go another seven underneath what LSU was allowing last year, you're talking about then a defense that would be allowing about 20.5 points per game, yeah. which either one of these teams would kill for. It would make them pure clear-cut national championship contenders so because i think that lsu who we expect to be better on defense and we expect the same from usc mm -hmm. i do think that is the early advantage for that team where the defenses are by the end of the year is going to be a really fun look but where they are today I think the edge has to be on LSU side. And I think that total represents one of the storylines surrounding both of these programs. USC in its first year in the Big Ten. Can they contend for a conference crown? Can they reach the college football playoff? Same story for LSU in the S. EC. No longer divisions. Don't just have to get past Alabama to play in Atlanta for that conference title. Can the Bayou Bengals contend? And Kev both brought in new defensive coordinators. Blake Baker has SEC experience from his two years at Missouri. Danton Lynn, only one year as the defensive play caller at UCLA, but makes a short trip, remains in conference, of course, and now is the D.C. at Southern Cal. And you said this way back in the summer, and it's something that has stuck with me. LSU wasn't supposed to be this bad yeah. defensively a season ago. USC had a lot of questions to answer, with Alex Grinch, once again, who followed Lincoln from Norman and wasn't great with the Sooners and was not good in 2022. It kept USC from a Pac-12 championship. USC got embarrassed when they played virtually everybody in the Sugar Bowl by Tulane. Those questions weren't answered. They were further. So now Danton Lynn takes over for Alex Grinch. Southern Cal was the third Worst power conference scoring defense last year, allowing nearly 35 points per game. They were the worst rushing defense in the Pac-12 as well, giving up 184 yards per game on the ground. That has to be fixed right away, and they will be tested by an LSU offense that, yes, Jaden Daniels, the Heisman Trophy winner, is not there, but Garrett Nussmeyer takes over for what was the best scoring offensive output with 45.5 points per game last year for LSU. This is all why I'm looking towards the under in this game. Now, that's on the move the other direction. Uh, I'm at, yes, this morning was 64.5. Yeah. This number's up to 66. There will come a point if this thing continues to shoot where it's time to buy back in. 
But there is just so much defensive progression that is so fair to bank on that that does half the work for you. And then it's the other reasons that these teams are currently not ranked inside the top 10, and it's the quarterback departures. If Jaden Daniels and Kayla Williams were back again, yeah. these two teams would be favorites to make the college football playoff no matter what the schedule is. And forget my thoughts on either quarterback. Miller Moss and Garrett Nussmeyer have a tough task at hand. Yeah. And they do it with a lot of talent departing around them. There is no Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas. You you have Dorian Singer plays for, for Utah now. They, they're, you know, Marshawn Lloyd's a Green Bay Packer. Yeah. So USC doesn't have the same skill positions. They're usually, look, and there are guys to be excited about. We're going to go through these guys. They're props, Zachariah Branch and C.J. Daniels. But th- when we talk about unproven, man, it's it's everywhere on the offensive side of the football except for that LSU offensive line, which is star-studded. Well, absolutely, and I think maybe if you do want to give the edge to an offense just in regards to play calling, maybe it is Lincoln Riley and USC because they didn't change anything up from the scheme perspective. Even though uh, LSU and, and Nussmeyer played in the bowl game against Wisconsin, their offensive coordinator is now with uh, Riley Leonard and Notre Dame. Yep. How does that affect in, in terms of a week one matchup? And we, uh, we talk about it, and we talked about it yesterday in regards to Georgia and Clemson. You know, in week one matchups where you have elite competition and say what you will, you USC is a top 25 opponent for the most part, especially from an offensive perspective. You have to break tendency. You just can't go into what you showed last year with different talent. You have to be going in with with an offense and a defensive scheme that can confuse the opponent and make that defense and offensive coordinator think, and that's where you catch them, and that's where you catch the chunk plays. So, again, I'm intrigued to see how this plays out. I, I do feel we'll get points. I don't know if we get through 65, and I'm not willing to pull the trigger trigger right here right now yeah. but if we do see maybe eight minutes of scoreless action 50 51 52 that's an area where i might jump in it's a really good point and in all three years now under brian kelly in baton rouge lsu has started their season on this sunday night in a marquee matchup the previous two against florida state they came up short against fsu in both of the season openers under bk so far this is year number three as a a favorite in the two years under Brian Kelly. The Bayou Bengals 12 and 8 against the spread. USC only a dog five times in the two seasons with Lincoln Riley at the helm. Three and two against the spread, including an outright victory in the Holiday Bowl against Louisville, in which Miller Moss was the star. More than 370 yards, six touchdown tosses, a Holiday Bowl record. By the way, Garrett Nussmeyer, really good in the ReliaQuest Bowl against a good Wisconsin secondary, nearly 400 yards passing and multiple passing scores as well. Garrett Nussmeyer bowed his time. He now takes over for Jaden Daniels. Not just the number one and number two overall picks in the 2024 NFL Draft. The two most recent Heisman winners in college football. Williams in 2022, Daniels a season ago in 2023. And I do want to make this point about Brian Kelly and LSU moving forward. Brian Kelly is a very successful college football head coach in year number three and a lot of people are talking about this for LSU's chances of a plus 125 ticket being cashed to get to the college football playoff at Central Michigan in 2006 he took a five or six win program to nine wins at Cincinnati in 08 an 11 win season an orange bowl appearance and at Notre Dame a lot more talent, but his first two years, only eight wins for the Irish. That next season in 2012, 12 wins, Kevin, a BCS championship game appearance. This is why I bet LSU to win the SEC. I think they have that type of ceiling, and I do think the schedule's lined up for them to be in that game. It's a 12-1 to number. Uh, I like both these teams a lot. I like LSU maybe a touch more. Sunday night in Las Vegas gives way to a Monday night in Tallahassee. Up next. says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. 
But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Crit. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of, of depth there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton. They will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton's actually be the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. It's been a five-day run of college football to start off week number one. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, tonight on Sunday in one final game to round out the opening weekend on a Monday night in Tallahassee. The second consecutive ACC game for Florida State to kick off this season after the Dublin drubbing by Georgia Tech. Not a drubbing, but a three-point win for the Yellow Jackets. Outright as a a 10-and-a-half point underdog. So how does Florida State bounce back they're a 16 and a half point favorite tomorrow night against boston college in the debut of the bill o'brien era for the eagles kev it's a three score spread in favor of fsu what resilience do you think we see out of the Knolls? i am a little worried about my position in this game because i don't know if i'm getting the best of the number sometimes you always you know you want to sell high buy low Is this a good buy low spot for Florida State? I think there's an argument to be made. We do a little bit of spread math here. Year over year numbers, a pair of early season games on a neutral. The Florida State Boston College game would have been lined at minus 30 for Florida State if you use three and a half points as a home, which I think is a fair number at the college level. Uh, Now, this year it would be 13, 17 points of movement. Now, there's a number of things that factor in to say, okay, is that fair? Boston College last year only lost that game. Like two. Right. And Florida State has lost a million players that made that team what it was. I don't, Jordan Travis, namely, but much, much more. Plus, as well, what Florida State showed in week number one. And it's that factor plus Bill O'Brien that have allowed me to say, you know what? I still want to bet Boston College here at over two touchdowns, catching 16 and a half. The Bill O'Brien factor is probably easy for people to understand. I, I want to bet on Bill O'Brien at the college game catching this many points. I think he's going to be able to hang with top teams. This is an NFL guy. He's obviously got had his time at Penn State, so he knows both. I just think the preparation will be there. But it's that third thing that leads to market movement that you always have to battle with. Is it valid or is it an overreaction? And that's why week one to week two betting is so tricky. Yeah. But Florida State did not just lose. Sometimes uh, NC State's a great example, Right. Where it's like, look, man, they're thinking about Tennessee. Let's not let's not go crazy here. What in the world was Florida State thinking about? I was told that Florida State was going to be so pissed off about what happened last year, they were going to crush every single team in their path. Instead, I saw a team that offensive line, defensive line yep. didn't have it. And what I saw from DJU is the same underwhelming quarterback play I've seen ever since he's left South Bend. 
if you, you remember, you remember. Oh, what a game. So, to me, Joe, I'm fl- fading Florida State. I, I don't think this team's a contender at all. See, I'm willing to take a shot, saying that last week or week zero was just they came out flat, and it takes a, a week to get the kinks out. Unfortunately, they were on the losing send, uh, side of that matchup. Again, when I look at this matchup, to me, it's going to come down to the trenches. They could not run the football. So I want to establish the run early, especially maybe under an undersized front seven. And again, you're talking about a team that got ripped last year in Boston college that gave up a buck 87 and almost five yards per carry yeah. i lean to the rushing attack and i lean to the alts I, in the first game it was two of philly in regards to the touchdowns i think this this one's the home run hitter roy dell williams lives up to the billing you look at the numbers right now one 110 plus is three to one mm. i think he hits pay dirt not once but potentially twice they utilize him in the screen game I think DJ will get in his number, 220, 225. Yeah. But I think this game's going to be won or lost in terms of the rushing attack. And again, I still see Florida State putting up 40, 47 points in this matchup at home. Yeah, you know, it is really interesting, right? BC, the second worst rushing defense in the ACC a season ago, more than 190 yards per game allowed. Who was the worst rushing defense in the ACC? That was Georgia Tech. And Florida State had zero success last week against the Jackets. New defensive coordinator Tyler Santucci took over. They held the Knolls to only 98 rushing yards as a team, just 3.2 yards per carry. Roydale right Williams was the leading back. 12 carries for 38 yards in his debut for Florida State. What was so fascinating about the game, and to your point, Kev, Florida State did zero to inspire confidence. It was perfectly executed by Brent Key and the Yellow Jackets. It was 14 possessions in total, the fewest we have seen in a college football game at the FBS level since 2020. Florida State only had seven offensive drives, and they actually scored on four of the seven, two field goals, two touchdowns. They scored a touchdown on their only offensive possession in the last 21 minutes of regulation. It just wasn't good enough. Florida State has won five in a row against Boston College, four of the five by only a single score, just a victory margin of 8.3 points per game. And as Kev alluded to last year, it was BC at home in Chestnut Hill, Losing only by two. A drive with the football under four minutes to try to go and win the game. Came up short, but easily covering as a 26-and-a-half point underdog. And a lot of that was Thomas Castellanos at the quarterback spot. More than 300 yards through the air. 95 and a score on the ground. One of three FBS QBs a season ago, along with the Heisman winner in Jaden Daniels, Caden Salter at Liberty, to rush Kev for more than 1,000 yards. So that's kind of the, the question I have here. We show Boston College doesn't have the better quarterback. And I know the passing numbers aren't great, 15 right. touchdowns, 14 picks. We ran for 1,000 yards last season. And 13 rushing scores. I, I like, this is the thing, and again, we can do it big picture. DJU is a give me ball, give me a ballpark, is, the, is a what best quarterback in the ACC? Top five? Top three? Top Top eight, eight, like top half. Yeah, Ugh. yeah. No, not, not good. Uh, Oregon State. I mean, he had success because of the rushing attack, right? With right. Damian Martinez, he works right. well off of play action. Doesn't work well in regards to you know taking games over. Unfortunately, you're laying sixteen and a half. Yeah, at a quarterback deficit. Now, again, it's not the end all be all. Colorado's going to catch a gazillion from whatever, right? And, but DJU's performance. I know he completed some big fourth downs. It wasn't all on him, but it was just another reminder of, yeah, this, this he's not the guy. Yeah. He's never going to be what we thought he was going to be. Absolutely so. 193 yards last week against what, by the standards entering, was a poor Georgia Tech defense. Only seven yards per attempt. Bill O'Brien, two seasons as the head coach at Penn State over a decade ago. A 15-9 overall record as an FBS head coach. Betting cards next. says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. 
But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsCrit. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of, of steps there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton, they will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton's actually the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest. Handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. Betting cards for the final two games of week number one. Live right here on this special Sunday edition of College Football Today on SportsGrid. He is the mastermind of the college football pigskin. That's Joe Lisi. He is OK Dubs. That is Kevin Walsh. And I am Ben Stevens. How were the cards on the first full Saturday of the year, gents? Five and six made some obvious mistakes. Don't put touchdown scorers on a card. Fade, Dabo, and Clemson. Uh, those were just two things that I could have easily corrected. Uh, five and five, five, you know. So yeah. some things could have been moved around. I was good. I was better with the sides, though, which I was happy about. Your dad helped you pay for the tracking service? Listen, listen. Yeah, the yeah, tracking yeah. service. We, you got yeah. it now. Documented. No, yeah, Documented. Well, the percentages are in. Best well, bets. Mine were, red hot. Mine were like the this. Terrible. Yeah. Two and five. I didn't nail Vanderbilt, but I will right. say this. <laughs> I adjusted very quickly in the second half, although, thank you. Oh, the no. mojo changed right away with the tweet. Texas Tech is losing against a- at, Abilene yeah, again, Christian. A text, um, a text, and let me just say, just for the record, my six-bet betting card went five and one. And yet, oh. wheel. Um, <laughs> it's a wheel. Guys, a and wheel on the show. And the wheel on the mush. Here he is. Fantastic. No, that's and you hit a parlay yesterday because of whose quarterback rushing yards prop that you like. I, uh, Riley Leonard. Right. And who gave that out as part of their betting card? I, I, to be honest, I was looking at the games. I don't know. Did right. he? Did he give it out? I, I'm, I mean, I don't think he would have brought it. That'd be great if he, if he was like, I gave it out. I, over three. All right. Good for you. All right. Discord. Yeah. Uh, no, look, that's great. Uh, I love to see you five and one. That's what yeah. it's all about here. Yes. Uh, I will also say I got a funny message from someone the other day because um, I gave out the Drew Aller bet. Yeah. And I must be a basketball fan, which is right up my alley. They yeah. typed in like J R U E. They're like, yeah. right. find the kids. They the said you, you didn't give the you gave out the the prop, but you didn't give out. I didn't the give team. out the school. And the I, height, yeah. the weight. I just say this: yeah, yeah. we love winners on on college football today. But in college football, rushing yards, it, just because he had the fifteen by the second quarter, a couple of sacks, you got to pump. Don't put yeah, that I, I, always. I, listen, anyone who says stuff, I I know they mean well. Right. So I leave it be, right? You know what I mean. And then we I wouldn't, an- I wouldn't answer till the fourth quarter. No, I but you did I talk to somebody who liked Vandy yesterday or wanted to fade Vandy yesterday. But hey, <laughs> oh. we got to get to our betting cards for tonight and ah. tomorrow. Lisa, you got to take it away. I'll start a game tonight. LSU open that is a four and a half point favorite this morning, down to three and a half. If you love him at four and a half, gotta love it at three and a half. And I altered it as high as nine and a half because I think physicality will win this matchup. We also talk about Brian Kelly on the road or on a neutral field over the past six seasons, 30 and 14 overall. I don't care about the last two years. I think they have 
a, a significant advantage in in the trenches. I think they win it tonight. Josh Williams, he's my guy. Where's number 18? He's the bigger back over Caleb Jackson tonight. I think he could score pay dirt not once but twice at plus 450. Also, altered him up, guys, over 50 and a half tonight. Mason Taylor, I think he has a huge part of this offense. He 50 plus receiving yards at plus 142 to hit pay dirt plus 162. And then I'm taking the over Monday night. I do believe uh, Florida State scores a 40 spot at least. Mm. And this game flies through the total. Bounce back at home. That's the difference. So for me, I will say this. I, you know, I was mad at myself that I took uh, the total in a Georgia Clemson game. So yeah. laying the number. I was like, all right, that's a little lesson learned. I was going to be on LSU. But then some. I promised myself that if something was something, then I had to pivot, so I pivoted. Yeah. Uh, and I do like this under, and it's something that I've been wanting to get involved with, and that's what I'm involved with here at 64 and a half. If this number gets up to 67 and a half, I'll probably have to get back in, but I'm confident in, in this number here. I think that they're this is just a number that's still a tick too high based on the uncertainty that we have with some of the offensive weapons that have been changing and the defenses that are desperate, desperate to progress here. I also think you could see a little bit of conservativeness in an early mm. game like this, right. which is going to be important for both teams at large chances here. It's important to hang in a game like this. You don't want to be rolled by 17, 21 type of points in a matchup like this. So I'm happy to play under at 64 and a half. And I mentioned I'm going to go with Boston College here uh, to cover those 16 and a half points, yeah. trusting Bill O'Brien and fading this Florida State team while we're still getting numbers like this. I am very sorry to do this to you. But I like LSU minus four and a half as well. Line back up to four in a hook. I think the Bayou Bengals are a better team, and I think the Bayou Bengals are a better team by a touchdown tonight in Las Vegas. But I'll go to the props as well. Zachariah Branch for USC. Really three sophomore wideouts now anchoring this wide receiver room in L.A. for Miller Moss, who has the higher passing yards prop tonight than that of Garrett Nussmeyer. Zachariah Branch, featured in the return game last year, now takes that leading role in the wideout room. Roydell Williams over 65 and a half rushing yards tomorrow night in Tallahassee. I know you don't like that one as well. We get back at it, though. It was on the card week zero. Don't shake your head. Thomas Castellanos, anytime TD as well. Joe Lacey, Kevin Walsh, Ben Stevens. We'll see you next week on College Football Today. We do. says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Carlos Alcaraz has won the last two Grand Slam titles at the French Open on the clay and at Wimbledon earlier this summer. He enters as the favorite. You have a bunch of, of depth there. Francis Tiafo, Ben Shelton. They will likely play in round three. The winner would play Djokovic most likely, which would be an incredible match. I like Ben Shelton as a sleeper. If Djokovic is hurt, you never know. I think Shelton's actually be the guy that gets hot. The conditions favor him. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this 